One of them may be the one that uh, turns against the other one, may be rewarded. So you could set up different numbers of per, uh, in this thing. So if the game is considered from a repeated point of view, this has been studied by Robert, Robert Allman and various others, then it is stable for the players to behave in a cooperative way, even though non-cooperative game theory is being applied. Because uh, if the players have reactive strategies so that each side plays with a strategy that as soon as the other side stops cooperating, then the first side player will also stop cooperating. So there's a, a, re, a negative reaction strategy tends to enforce cooperation. Now, I wanted to use principles like this for my game theory analysis. And uh, in connection with studying that, I studied the same problem that I really wanted to study on the th level of three players. I studied it for two players. And I did a model games where the players could cooperate or uh, uh, they could cooperate in various ways. And if the, the way they, they would, in a repeated game, they would, could vary their reactions. So I ultimately, I found a, a formula so that uh, each player would, would simultaneously have a demand strategy and a utility assignment play strategy. There would be a curve, I don't have a picture of it now, but there would be a region of possible cooperation. This was, was actually cur had a curved boundary, and uh, each player would say, well, if I am selected to be the agent, then I will select this point on the curve of uh, the maximum profitability, the Pareto, it's actually called the Pareto boundary, the region of possible cooperation. And on the other hand, I'm going to demand this much of a level of profit. So if the other player doesn't give me that much, then uh, I will not, next time I, I will stop accepting him. Well, this is ultimately uh, designed to work on a continuous basis. And I could show you some of the mathematics of that. But I just wanted to mention that in the in the time before I had gotten to the three-player models, I worked on the two-player, and I I went to a meeting, uh, the uh, nonlinear analysis. It was organized by someone in Florida. But the first meeting that, that I went to was in Catania in Sicily. So I talked about this on the two-person level there. And later on, there was a similar meeting in the island of Ischia, uh, near, uh, near, uh, near uh, Napoli. And I, I continued talking on this there. I'm, I think I may, be may have been, I may have gotten to the three-player level there. I'm not, I don't remember precisely. Now, the, the, so I could show the, with the, with the two-player uh, model, there was a curve of possibilities, and uh, there's a, let's see, this mathematics, this will be a bit uh, technical. This is how it was done for two players. There was a, a quantity, see, that doesn't show, does it? <laughs> uh oh, no. Well, you see there, these are exponential functions and uh, a1 is something that is a, a function that's generated, uh, and then this small A1 is generated from the capital A1. 
And this describes the probability of player one accepting that player two can be his agent. See, each player can accept the other player as his agent. It's a, a surrender process by which cooperation is realized. It's like a rotating chairman shipper. Uh, the agent is like a chairman of a, in this case, a committee of two, but later it can be three. Now, this quantity U1B2 meant utility of player one as chosen by player two, by two, U1 by two. And uh, on the other hand, D1, this is something chosen by player one. This is demand by player one. And this, this then the quantity capital A1 is a function of that, and it, this function is also modified by a quantity that's called E1, which really is epsilon 1. And that was to be small. And what happens is we ultimately let that go become smaller and smaller. We're concerned with the limiting behavior. And uh, so this exponential function means that if U1, B2 is bigger than E1, and E1 is sort of small, then this quotient will be quite large this exponential will be even larger until finally the number A1 will be nearly 1, which means that uh, player 1 would have a, a very almost certain possibility, probability of accepting player 2 as his agent. And that the thing is completely dual for player 2. Now, this, this number here was chosen by player one, U2, B1, but then player two reacts to it through the medium of his demand, which is D2. And uh, this produces a, a reactive situation in, in terms of, of two players, and it was found that... Uh, there was an equilibrium, and the, 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 there's some more to say about the rules. But what happened was that if the uh, quantities E1 and E2 would be, be made small, I, it was found that they need to be the, the same quantity, which is a, a technical thing. I later called that E3 or epsilon 3. But then uh, the, alter, the equilibrium, equilibrium would have much more greater and greater efficiency if the, e, the epsilon quantity E1 or E2 would be, would be smaller. And this means that the players would be very sharply reacting. Player Player one is reacting to U1, B2. He's reacting to what player two chooses. That really is the point. There's a, a bargaining curve of the Pareto boundary of the accessible region of cooperative, cooperative game arrangements. That uh, And player one uh, reacts to what player two would give him when he does surrender to player two, that he does accept player two as his agent. Now I have some charts that show how this works out when it's generalized to three players. And how am I going to get? Oh, I have to. I have to go back. Now this isn't well. This is. This is more. The, E1 and E2 there become E3, and that's epsilon 3. Now, this is three players, but I should maybe look at a previous one. Let's see. Radiographic A. Uh, yes, this is a, a nice... Uh, 
the payoff side is, is labeled here in a confusing way so that you don't see one. The game model is such that the total utility available is one when the players uh, cooperate in a perfect manner. Now, the structure of the model will uh, change uh, the mathematical outcome. If, if E3 or epsilon 3 is not zero, it, it, it isn't where we calculate it. We just uh, can look at the limiting form of it. Then uh, demands are not perfectly sharp. There's a certain fuzziness. And so under these conditions, the players do not operate on the highest level of efficiency. But this was actually calculated that this is in a, uh, there are other numbers that are called B1, B2, B3. These are coalition strength descriptions in a three-person game model. It's a simple model which really is derived from the idea of certain values of the coalitions. B3 is the value of the coalition of player one and player two. If they simply get together without player three, they can get a payoff of 0.2 in this case, for this calculation. That's one-fifth. And, uh, but also, any two of the players can get a payoff going, agreeing separately of one-fifth. But all three, it's normalized. If all three cooperate, they get a payoff of one. So the, the challenge, the mathematical challenge uh, was if the two-player coalition strengths are different in this model, which might not be, it's not entirely like the Norman and Morrison coalition values because uh, there is a technical point that the utility is not always perfectly transferable. But that is a little complication. Now, uh, this chart was actually worked out in uh, 2002. These points have a little blue color. And the first project assistant helped with uh, developing a series of calculations there. Now, what happens is that when this E3 or epsilon sub 3 is quite small in a perfectly symmetric game situation, then the players get uh, more than 0.9 uh, fraction of the payoff that's available. Of course, it, get, it gets all of it as this goes to, to one. But if this number is as large as 0.2, then the, the fraction they get is about half. So about half of the resources are wasted if they if the demanding process is a little rough, is not so sharp. I will not have time to cover everything. <laughs> I'm prepared for that. Now, paradographic. Now, a second project assistant worked out another case a little later on. And uh, in this case, we had these B numbers that describe coalition strengths, what two players could get privately as differently. The only coalition was called the coalition three, which is a player one and player two. The naming is cyclical. If they agree together, they can get two thirds of all the payoff. So they're in a strong position. And uh, and it was possible to compute solutions here. And these are other numbers. These E4 and E5 I haven't described yet, but they're small, they're numbers that should be small. And they would go, we want the limit as they would go to zero. And they described some of the joining together, the process of joining together of uh, uh, the uh, 
the coalition members and process the rules of election.